Hi, I'm Janine, and this is Janine Sews. Today I'm going to tell you about this top I made, show you some fabric that I bought, and give you a tour of my sewing room. So this top is the mix-it top from the sewing workshop. It's got this keyhole opening, um, short sleeves, slashes on the side, that's about it. I'm just going to stand up and give you a little twirl. Very simple pattern. This is the third time I've made this top. The first time I made it with a novelty cotton from Hobby Lobby and I was pretty happy with it. The second time I made it with linen and I was pretty unhappy with it. So what did I learn? Well, I learned between those two experiences that I needed to do a high rounded back adjustment on it because on both of those versions, I couldn't wear it without keeping the button done up because it always pulled back. Now, I did the high rounded back adjustment. I can actually wear it with the button undone. The other thing that I learned was that I needed to size down because the linen one I'd made in an XL and the shoulders were huge. But the third thing learned was to actually properly shape the sleeves before I set them in. When I made the linen version, I was truly very unhappy with it. And I bought the pattern from Linda Lee when she spoke to our ASG group. So I sent her an email and I said, am I doing something wrong? I mean, these sleeves just don't work. They don't fit right. So she really quickly sent me an email back with instructions on how to actually shape the sleeves. So I did that on this version and they fit much better. I'm much happier with it. I'm still not super thrilled with this top, however. What I like is the way that Linda does the neck opening with the facing because the facing is actually finished what I don't like is how small the neck opening is. I mean, there is no, I mean, this is, this is, I've got maybe like an inch of ease here and I don't have an inordinately large neck. That's just the design and it doesn't suit me. It's just uncomfortable. I don't like wearing turtlenecks either. I just don't like things on my neck. So I don't really like this. I will wear it open, I think. The other thing I dislike is the length of the sleeves because my arms, even when, well, of course they're not in the best shape right now, but even when they are in good shape, this is, this is one of the broadest parts of my arm right here at my shoulder. And this cuts right in the middle of my shoulder, which of course it's like with legs, you want things to cut where it's more slender. So at the bottom of the knee, at the calf and I think the same thing on the sleeve I think the sleeves would be nicer if they were at least an inch and a half longer all was not lost because this fabric I actually just use as a toile I've got a bunch of it I bought it at Fabric Mart a couple of years ago got a great deal so I didn't use precious fabric for this and I was about to give this pattern a try on a really nice rayon and I'm so glad I didn't do that because I'd be angry with myself right now because I, I, I will wear this, but it's certainly not going to be a favorite. So that's the third time I have tried the sewing workshops mix it top and it's not for me. I'm sorry to say, I, I don't know if their style is for me. It's very Eileen Fisher esque and I'm just not that. Although I know that, I mean, it's, it, beautiful lines, literally makes great stuff. Sewing Workshop does really nice stuff. I just don't think it's for me. I think I said the same thing the last time I made this, but I gave it a third try. Third time was not the charm. <clears throat> so what else have I bought? Well, I don't know if you can see I have a kitty here today. She's being very good. So the next fabric that I bought is from Style Maker Fabrics. I found them on Instagram and I've been following them for a while. They've had a couple of challenges 
on Instagram this this past winter and a um, couple of weeks ago on their feed they had this fabric and I just had to have it I didn't care what it cost I had to have it this is an aqua background with pink fuchsia and coral flowers and yellow I loved this there's a little bit of gold in it too, you know, shiny things. So this is an art gallery fabric and the line is, it's called Bloomsbury. So like Bloomsbury in London. The designer is Barry J. The name of the fabric is Botanist's Poem. 95% cotton, 5% spandex. I love it when they print all this stuff on the side so I don't have to remember. So, three yards of this. And I'm gonna make a top for my mom. Just a simple high-necked t-shirt for her. And I'll send that up to her because she is bemoaning the fact that she can't leave her care home um, and shop. So I'm gonna make that for her and then I'm gonna make something for me. And what I want to make is, of course it's gonna be kind of a t-shirt thing, but I wanna have an interesting neckline on it. And in Ready to Wear, I have seen and purchased tops that have like a band here and maybe a little tie, something like that. But I can't find a pattern for anything like that. So if you know of a pattern, will you let me know? Um, I won't be sewing this immediately but I want to make something that I'll just love wearing all summer. So, so pretty. Such a floral girl. So the sewing room tour, because it's so exciting. And I'm giving you a tour today because we are selling our house and moving next week. We're moving from Atlanta to South, East Pennsylvania, close to Baltimore. And um, so the Packers are coming Monday and I don't know when I'll be in my sewing room again. I'm hoping it's not too long, but this is our eighth corporate move. So I know that things don't always go to plan and sometimes it takes you a while to get things set up. So I thought that I would chronicle my sewing room here with you and then when we get in the new house, I'll be set up in a new sewing room. Um, I know it's a little bit bigger room. It's also on the east side on the front of the house. Right now I'm on the west side in the back of the house, so the light will be different. But I've put in run one request for the new sewing room, and that is to have a really big cutting slash storage table in the middle of the room. It's all I really want. I'll make everything else work. But here, I just have a really narrow, what is it, an 18 inch by four foot table for cutting, and you can't spread anything out. So I do a lot of my cutting on one of the spare beds with a mat on it. And I would just really love to have somewhere where I can cut things out and just leave fabric and it not hanging on the floor or cats aren't jumping on it. I know the cats will jump on the cutting table, but not as much as they do on a bed. So without further ado, I'm just gonna give you a little tour of my sewing room. All right, I'm going to try to give you this tour without making anyone sick. That's always the problem when you're doing moving videos. So this is my sewing room. This is a bedroom, um, not a huge bedroom, but it's a bedroom in our house on the second floor. That's my main cutting table. And you can see it's not a huge cutting table. I have it on risers from Home Depot. Underneath the cutting table is my big cutting mat. And if I'm cutting something larger than that wee table, I throw that cutting mat onto the spare bed or maybe down in the dining room. But sometimes I'm too lazy to walk downstairs. So that is, all of my furniture is modular furniture from a company called Ballard Designs. 
Ballard Designs is a mail order furniture company. They're based in Atlanta and they have a clearance center. So you could, depending on the sales and what's going on, you can get a setup like that for about, I don't know, what did we pay? Maybe $50 for each of the cabinets and $25 for the top. So for not a lot of money, regular price is crazy, but if you live here, you can get clearance things. So I do not have any sewing things underneath because this is also my regular office. So I've got, you know, other stuff. So that's primarily just the tabletop where I have my serger and cover stitch set up. I need a lot of light when I work, so I have lights everywhere. So my serger is a Bernina 800DL. I've had it since about 20, not even 20, 2004. I bought that when I was sewing a lot of window treatments and that's all I sewed in those days, window treatments and the occasional bag. So I got that just to make the horrible job of doing long seams easier. And then two years ago, I got Brother 3550 cover stitch and I'm quite happy with it. I have not spent enough time with it to learn everything about it, but I can do a fantastic hem and neck edge on a knit pretty easily. So then here, I know that there's someone who, who has mentioned a couple of times they love this box. I think I got this at Costco. If I didn't get it at Costco, I got it at Home Goods. Um, and in here, I have mostly bag making supplies in those three little containers. And then in the back, I've got all my extra scissors and stuff and some ribbons. Just, you know, this becomes a catch-all, like everything. You know, anything you can close becomes a catch-all. And in this drawer, I have all my machine manuals. So they're handy because I do refer to those. And then in the bottom drawer, I you can change the setup. I have ribbons and trim. This bag is my L, my brother LB6800. It needs to go into the shop. So I'm going to turn around. Oh, I'll show you up here too. I just have one of these floating shelves. And that's where I keep mostly my embroidery thread. My husband has a 3D printer. So he's been playing around making things for me. Oh, we've got a visitor on our, my table. So this is a corner unit, again from Ballard Designs, and it doesn't exactly match the other one because, you know, you buy what is available on sale. So here is where I keep my regular machine. And my regular machine, I've told you before, new to me, Brother Paysetter, PS500. I'm going to show you one thing that I think is cool about this. So this just pops open and all of your feet are stored in here. I think that's really tidy and great. It keeps everything all together. And that is on the free arm. I don't know if I showed you this before. It's got all the stitches here. All right, so that's the machine. So in this little table, this is where I spend all my time, is right here in this corner. And yes, there's often a cat right there. So on this side, I have mostly paper stuff. It's not sewing stuff. Here I have sewing stuff. So the top drawer is Mostly machine parts, pieces, feet, um, for various machines. Second drawer is called cutting and pinning. So these are really the notions that you use every day. So my, my scissors, my regular rotary cutters, seam riffer, needle case, clips, pins, um, other tools. These old drits, 
I love these things. I wish they would still make these. So that's the second drawer. Third drawer is thread. And this is mostly thread I'm currently working with or like black and white basic thread or silk threads and things like that. And all my bobbins are here. I don't make up a lot of bobbins. I try to just use them. I really try to be minimal minimalist, but it's so hard when you sew. And in the bottom drawer, I have the embroidery um, module for my machine. Just keep that there. So, because this is just furniture that we put together with what we could get on clearance, and that's just fine with me, I also have this little rolling cart, and this is, again, more stuff and junk. The top drawer is really just whatever I, when I'm cleaning off the table, that's where everything goes. So that's a real mishmash of stuff, usually current kind of stuff. Second drawer is elastic. Um, seam tape, stay tape, stuff like that. Lots of elastic. Um, bits and pieces, that sort of thing. Bottom drawer is attach, things to attach things. So Velcro, buttons, you know, buttons that you cover, snaps, um, D-rings, snap machine, various snap, snap, snaps, that kind of stuff. And then here, that's like knitting stuff and, you know, other craft things, because I'm kind of too crafty. Let's go over here. Um, I keep my ironing board on the back of the door. Just nice to get it out of the way. All right, so here, I have to have a TV in my sewing room. I just have to have a TV. So here I keep my books, Berta magazines, threads, sew magazine. That box there is patterns that I'm considering making soon. Down in the bottom, those are project boxes. I don't have any projects planned, so those are empty. You've already seen this. That is my backup backup machine, my old brother. Um, I have my sewing box that I've had forever, and I mostly have embroidery stuff in there. I've just started to do embroidery again while we've been locked down because I'm bored. I want something to do when I watch TV. Now let's go in my closet. So, this is where I keep almost everything. It's just a regular closet. And on the door, I have one of those jewelry keepers. So, I hang stuff on that. And then I just put everything else in the little pockets. I've got all of my needles there by purpose. And then... I'll go up to the start at the top of the closet. A lot of this is just stuff and junk. You know, with moving, you kind of get stuff out of the way. So I've got craft kits, patterns, trim, serger thread, patterns, 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 patterns. At least one of those boxes is patterns I was going to get rid of before we moved, but when everything closed down and I couldn't donate stuff, I just kept them. Then I hang my stash, most of my stash. So that is the vast majority of my stash. Um, I have plans for most things there. If I don't use something in a couple of years, I get rid of it. So there are some things that are kind of getting close to a year and a half and they will be gone soon. Then down here, this box is like scraps and bits and pieces, stuff I'll probably use for something. My scan and cut is hidden away there. Interfacing, more bits and pieces of fabric. And then I have one drawer with 
like sparkly things I've bought to iron on shirts, things that I buy when I go to sewing expos. Um, embellishment stuff. I just, you know, even if I buy a ready to wear t-shirt and I put that on, I think my mom would like that. You know, just a cute little gift thing. I've got a lot of stuff like that. Well, I've got a box full of stuff like that, a drawer full. Pressing that. Then here, more project boxes. Most of these have towels in them because I thought that I was going to do a lot of embroidery on towels and then I broke my embroidery machine. So I'm gonna get that fixed. Then ironing is here. <laughs> more craft stuff. Um, more craft stuff. Zippers, bias, and trim. Then down below, serger thread. My regular thread. I use these for thread. I've got two of those. And then I have one box, one of the, the Selkie kits. A basic box of embroidery thread. Stuff to make bags. You know, I just get excited about things and buy stuff. Then, this is more fabric. Some of this is nice fabric. I just haven't gotten around to using it. Like, this is a St. John knit. I want to make a cardigan out of that. There's also some more fabric over there. This is stuff that's pretty close to the end. I've had it. I haven't used it. More towels. And then down here, that's vinyl for the scan and cut. So that's pretty much my entire stash there. I do have one little box of more fabric. It's lining fabric, basically just lining fabric. But that's it. That's all I keep. That's too much fabric, actually. That's overwhelming to me right now. So that's the sewing room. Um, this is the best time of day in here when the sun comes in and it's really peaceful and quiet. It's my favorite time of day. So I know that the new sewing room will be bigger. Uh, it'll have light in the morning instead of the afternoon. So no more projects until moving after moving day. So that's it. Um, I will, I'll be on Instagram, I know, because I'm always on Instagram. Um, but I will record another video once we get into the new house. And if you have any suggestions for that fabric, I would really love to hear them. Thank you so much for watching and for subscribing and for following along. I think it's going to be really interesting when we get to Pennsylvania because I'm going to have more time to sew, and I'm kind of excited about that. Take care, and I will see you really soon.